We've been waiting for this summer transfer window to kick into gear for Manchester United. And I'll tell you what, in the last week, it really, really has. Man United announcing the signing of Mason Mount this morning. Manchester United going aggressively after Andre Onana into Milan's goalkeeper. We're after a new number one. Man United still in the hunt for a new striker. Also in the hunt for another midfielder, depending on signings. What I'm going to do, give me 10 minutes of your time, completely, I don't know why I did that, round up everything that's happened because it feels like United really are kicking this summer transfer window into gear after a very slow and ponderous... Look, look how many players we've been linked with so far. Only one done. That's Mason Mount. Hopefully, it could be two very, very soon with Andrea Nana. Look, drop a like on the video. Let me run through absolutely everything for you. But one thing I want to say before I start speaking about transfers is this, eh? You look at Arsenal. Signing Declan Rice, Havertz, Timber. Very good signings. City, they're going to get Gvardio. Of course they are. Won the treble and going out and signed Gvardio. Newcastle will get in Tonali. Liverpool have rebuilt their midfield. Chelsea have got Poch. Spurs have got Postecoglou. We've got Mount. We need more, but the Premier League next season, every single season from now on, the hyper competitive competitive nature of the Premier League is just going to be, it's just going to keep setting new, new highs, and whoa, we have got a lot to do and a lot to sign. But the first thing that has to be said is welcome Mason Mount, and that's the first signing through the door. Now this is a signing that it's been months in the planning for United. It's not something that's just come out of any somewhere. Oh look, uh, let's just try and take advantage of the fact that. He's only got one year left on his deal at Chelsea. United and Ten Hag specifically wanted him for a long time. The Athletic have released a really good article looking at the in-depth nature of it. I'm going to run through that maybe maybe tomorrow, maybe at a later stage. But Mason Mount's the first signing. And something that has caught me by surprise a little bit, I'll be totally honest. I'm sure it caught a lot of you by surprise. Is Mason Mount getting the number seven shirt? I've seen a lot of outrage over this. Honestly... I'm a bit surprised by the outrage. Like, people are like, ah, oh, the number seven shirt is synonymous with some of the best players that United have had. And yeah, it has. Back in the day. But if you remember the last, like, five, six, seven players who've worn that. Jeez, we gave it to Owen when he came to the club. Valencia wore it, gave it back because he couldn't wear it. Memphis Depay, well, that was a failure. Di Maria, well, let's not talk about that. Uh, Alexis Sanchez, well, let's not talk about that. Edison Cavani, meh. The number seven shirt for me does not have the same meaning as it does previously, the likes of uh, Cantona and, and Robson and, and Beckham and Ronaldo. If Mason Mount wanted that shirt or Ten Hag wanted to give it to him, then let's see him make his own legacy. Let's see him bring it back up. But ever since, I'll be honest, ever since we gave it to Owen, my affiliation with the number seven shirt being that iconic has sort of disappeared a little bit. I'd love someone to bring it back and I'd love that to be Mason Mount. Mason Mount, tick, done, in the box. Move on to the goalkeeper. And with the goalkeeper situation, this is something that's changed over the last, well, the clarity on it has changed over the last 10 days or so, maybe even less than that, the last week. David De Gea now free agent. Going into the summer, our priority was Harry Kane. That's where the budget was. Now, that's not happened. We've re-diverted money towards a goalkeeper. That's why... With De Gea currently being a free agent, Manchester United are pushing aggressively to sign Andre Onana. We know who our new number one is going to be next season if we complete the signing that Eric Ten Hag wants. The absolute latest on that, absolute latest, just the latest on that. We put that bid in for 45 million euros. Confirmed by Fabrizio Romano and confirmed by The Athletic, which I will run through next. 45 million euro bid is in. Inter Milan wants 60 million. You do the maths. It's only a 15 million difference. It's going to be quite a simple compromise, in my opinion, on this one. Should be looking at around 50 million euros up front with 5 million in add-ons. Difficult add-ons. That will suit all parties and we'll get our man. But this is what the Athletic are saying on the situation, right? Man United have made an opening offer worth up to 45 million euros for Onana. Serie A club, Inter, they want 60 million. But there is an expectation a compromise can be struck in the middle. Personal terms are unlikely to be an issue with the player believed to be open to the move and working with Eric Ten Hag again as he did at Ajax. So a compromise in the middle of that would be 52.5 million. I think we'll find it. This strikes me as a deal that I think can get done very quickly. And geez, uh, yeah, famous last words as a United fan to say that, right? But 52.5 million for a player of Onana's quality and the impact he's going to have on this team next season. It's a bargain. 
It really, and I've said, I think I've said this a few times in the live streams. Why is it the goalkeepers just don't uh, carry that same weight and power with the price tag? Given that he is, he's in the top ten, he's in the peak of his power, twenty-seven, just played the Champions League final. Strange, given how important the modern goalkeeper is. It's not just a shot stopper anymore. It's not just a cross collector. It's a playmaker from deep. It's the first player bringing it out from the back. So surprise, but <laughs> good enough for me. But uh, the Athletic saying the expectation is that a middle ground and a compromise will be found. I think we should find that next week. And it shouldn't be a problem. So that's mount, done, tick. A number eight, a aggressive pressing number eight. Tick, tick. Goalkeeper, Onana, tick. Not yet, but soon. Striker. Now, we know what our shopping list was, Ten Hag shopping list, was going into the summer. And it was Harry Kane at the top of that shopping list with like four circles around him. Nobody else really mattered. As it's transpired, because the Kane situation hasn't developed, United have reconsidered what was going on with David De Gea and now re-diverted funds towards Onana. And that's why the shopping list has sort of changed. Now, because Kane's not top of that shopping list, Rasmus Hoyland, United, I think, expected... Hoyland to emerge as the relatively cheaper alternative, somebody who's young, upcoming, developing, somebody who, with the right coach in charge, like Eric Ten Hag, can develop a young talent into a world-class star. That would have been a con the concept and a conversation around Rasmus Hoyland. Instead, Atalanta are like, <laughs> 70, 80 million, please, lads. And United are stuck in negotiations. I think this striker situation is one which will continue. Look, Man United want him. Talks have been ongoing for a long time. But like I've mentioned in my live streams quite a few times, I think the fact that we've moved so quickly after the De Gea situation has gone to a free trade, I say moves quickly. Once the De Gea situation reached that point, we've moved quite quickly with our Nana. But with, with Hoyland, I think the price tag is, is the restrictive point. And I don't know when that can I don't know when that conclusion is going to come this summer. I agree with all of you, by the way. A striker is the biggest priority we've got. I think the priority in terms of how giving that player as long as possible to embed himself in the club, I think signing Onana is more important. Not just for him, but for everybody else playing with him and the difference in style between the goalkeepers. But Hoyland, we're still in talks and we're still going after him. We're going to have to keep an eye on that because down there we've got, I've got Colo Moani down there as a potential signing. There are other strikers we're kind of tentatively linked with so far, but the striker you would imagine is next. But maybe this drags out because we're so far. You know how the, I'm saying, oh, Nana, we are 15 million off in the price of him. That's quite an easy compromise. With Hoyland, you're talking like 30-ish million. Much more difficult. A bit like the Mason Mount situation. Took us three bids to get Mason Mount, didn't it? Took us a long time. I imagine the Hoyland's going to, unfortunately, follow that pattern. And the last player I want to talk about at the moment is Amrabat. Amrabat, of course, is a Casemiro understudy. And if you're looking at midfield signings and strength in depth, that's the biggest weakness we've got inside that midfield. When Casemiro's out of the team, you look at it and go, who else is going to play there? Maybe Kobe Mainu is going to do that. But it's his breakthrough season. be very unfair to expect that of him. He might do that. I don't know. <laughs> He's got all the talent to. But Amrabat, you're seeing suggestions coming out from Italy that we've agreed personal terms with him. And, they, and that is something that's been going for a long, a long while now. Amrabat is definitely one to watch. I'll probably be doing a full story on the Amrabat rumours, where they've started and follow them from the route to now to sort of give you an understanding of who to trust and where the situation is. But Amrabat feels like a player who could come to United if we sell properly. And I think that one's kind of more dependent on sales than anything because we've gone and we've spent, what, 55, 60 mil on Mason Mount. Then you're looking at probably in the region of 50 million on Andrea Nana. And if our budget was indeed 120 million, then, well, that's not enough for Hoyland, let alone Hoyland plus Amrabat. So we need sales, right? But Eric Ten Hag, this shopping list, man, Mason Mount, done. Onana, I hope that by this point next week, we can also say done. And Onana can be part of that preseason tour game against, probably not against Leeds, but he'll be there in July training with the team. So if that would be Mount and Onana, two big signings. The big question mark, unfortunately, that I don't really think we've got too close to an answer for is the striker situation. I see this one still kind of rumbling on for a little bit. I don't know whether it's going to be Rasmus Hoyland, whether we're going to look elsewhere, whether Atalanta will reduce their price, whether Spurs will all of a sudden decide that they will sell to a Premier League club. 
I kind of wouldn't rule anything out. Maybe apart from that last one. Depends if we come in in late August with a big bid. And maybe he doesn't move to Bayern Munich. But Amrabat, one to watch if we actually start selling players. Up until that point, I can't imagine it going far. And of course, all of this. The takeover. Hanging over us. Like that monster in Stranger Things. Just like standing there. Like, I can't remember what it was called. Mind Flayer? Is that a Mind Flayer? I think it's a Mind Flayer. Let me know in the comments. Now we're seeing reports that Shake, that uh, the Glazers might not sell. Or not that they might not sell, but the Shake just seems uncertain whether they will sell. It's four weeks after they put in that bid for, what was it? North of five billion. And they haven't even heard back from the Glazers. Imagine that. Someone comes in to try and buy your house, gives you an offer that's like, Nine, like 90% maybe of your valuation, which is overinflated, and you just don't respond to them for four weeks. Peak lasers. But this man, oh, getting Onana in. Onana is the is the is the transformational signing this summer for me. New striker, goals galore. We're going to be finishing the chances we were creating, but we were creating those chances last season. Onana is the one that takes us from this certain version of our Ten Hag team to another one. Add Mount into that. Add the striker into that. And maybe add Amrabat into that. There'll be plenty more of those pots. But Ten Hag shopping list, we've ticked off one. Hopefully this point next week we'll tick off two. Then maybe there's two more remaining. It's good to see United moving. After a, a month of getting linked to every man and his dog. It's nice to see Mason Mount in a United shirt, and I'm looking forward to seeing Onana in a United shirt. And by the looks of things, that compromise won't be too difficult. Let me know what you think in the comments below.